Angela, our eldest daughter, was diagnosed, uh, which is about two and a half years of age, with EPP. Her hands swelled up, the pain was incredible. Um, I couldn't fit the same pair of shoes on her feet twice, her toes were breaking out in sores. Sadly, she just went through hell. Um, yeah, this makes me teary now talking about it. It was hard and it was awful. I'd go to take her hands and she wouldn't let me hold her hand. I'd go to put shoes on her feet, she wouldn't let me put shoes on her feet. I'd take her to the chemist and, and say something's wrong with her feet. But there was no help anywhere. So when we finally did see this specialist, uh, and even though the swelling in her hands was reduced, I was very fortunate in that instance that he picked it up straight away, his suspicions, because of the scarring on the inside of her um, hands then, and he explained then uh, he suspected the sun. The most difficult was knowing it wasn't going to go away, knowing that um, this was a lifelong condition for her and nothing I could do could take it away. Um, and how, and the fear of what laid ahead. Boom. It, um, at the same time, uh, the understanding that we had was that um, because it, the porphyrins had to be processed by the liver, it put the liver under such a strain that therefore the liver would fail uh, by the time they got to the age of 14 or 15. And um, so probably they won't live past 14 or 15. Oh, yes. So we were having weekly and then monthly blood tests to the point where Angela was so distraught she had to be strapped to a bed. Um, this little child had to be strapped to the bed, the legs and arms, to draw blood out of her regularly because so as they could do the tests. And, and here I was, as a mother holding her down for blood to be taken forcibly from her to the point where she would just um, vomit out of anxiety from it. There was one particular day where there was a, uh, a relief teacher was looking after the class and unbeknownst to me they were taken down to school oval and she was made to sit there on the school oval and after that she was in just so much pain her face swelled up like a football she couldn't even see out of her eyes I uh, was just a slit in her eyes her hands it was awful we were putting creams on the sores that were breaking out of her face and she had to stay in complete darkness for a week or so, uh, and that was just horrendous. Angela was uh, admitted to Children's Hospital for a couple of days, and she had a liver biopsy. They were fearful of giving her any anaesthetics or extra drugs that were needed. She had to have a needle biopsy through, through the side walls of her lungs, I think, to liver, to see the extent of any liver damage. And I remember that was just so, so heart-wrenching. We sat outside the room and she just screamed and screamed to the point apparently whether she stopped breathing uh, while they did this procedure. Following that, they said that they gave her a drug to wipe out all memory of that procedure because she was so traumatised by it. But we had to keep telling ourselves, well, it was for the better because we didn't know what liver damage she had. And I was so angry with with God, with life, for what she was going through. The decision to have Linda was because we wanted another child, and I uh, felt... Yeah, and the doctor said that we had a one in four chance that um, that the next child would have it. Um, we'd also uh, have a companion for somebody else in the world who, um, our first daughter, had nobody who knew anything about what she was going through. So if a sibling... Um, had, did have the same problem, it would mean that there would be at least two people that could communicate with each other, you know how I feel, type of thing. Because I didn't know how they felt anyway. But um, So there was, there was more to gain from trying again, rather than just saying, no, we won't do, we won't do that. You know? And I remember when the specialist came in and told me that she had it, I just cried and cried to the point where I, um, I remember them giving me a sleeping tablet to settle me down. I was so traumatised. I thought, um, he goes another poor child through all um, what we've been through. 
And I had a person say to me when, when you were having a difficult spell, uh, someone um, very close who was surprised with the answer, and, and she just said to me, well, why can't they just stay out of the sun? And then I just changed the subject. And I thought, they just don't understand. And I thought, it's easy to say stay out of the sun. You try every time you go to the shops, every time you go to a doctor's appointment, you try uh, every day of your life, you're mindful of where the sun is when you're driving and, and those activities to the repercussions, you soon wouldn't pass that comment so judgmentally, just stay out of the sun. And, and that's where you tend to become very introverted and feel very isolated, so you just shut up and put up with it. Mm. As I said, you hear someone talk about the pain of shingles and everyone's got so much sympathy for them and there's medications for them to help them sleep and so forth. But uh, my belief is the pain of shingles is probably minor to all the pain I've seen them go through. When I have seen my mother um, with shingles and it was like, no, that's nothing to what I've seen my girls go through. And you know that that's going to go away eventually. It may take a while, but it's not permanent. So you imagine living with that when it's permanent all the time uh, um, and seeing a young child suffer with it and not have a normal life. It, it's just, it rips your heart out.